There's a quote said by Abraham Lincoln. It says, I would rather be a little nobody than an evil somebody. And there's a quote by Taryn Kim that goes, don't pretend like you've never wanted to be that. Because we all have at one point or three. I'm just saying that if you put Lincoln and Terrence quote into perspective, you'll realize that bullies want nothing more than what we've wanted at one point or another. Bullying is defined by Wikipedia as the use of threat, force, or coercion to abuse, intimidate, or aggressively impose domination over others. Keyword being dominate. Let's start by talking about the bully. Who are they? Well, realistically, a bully could be anyone, but media has developed a stereotypical bully for us. These bullies are big and aggressive, arrogant and narcissistic. They bully simply because they can. But a little more research has shown that there are many different types of bullies. But why don't we focus on two right now? The second being the mirror image of Bully A. These bullies can be shy with low self-esteem, they may have been bullied in the past, and finally, these bullies may have come from a negative household. Now let's talk about the bullied, the ones who are most affected by this. Some common characteristics of victims are shy, lack of social skills, aggressive when irritated, and overall just a negative attitude. I interviewed a student who has experienced bullying, and she feels betrayed when she's bullied. A betrayal of trust. She finds it hard to open up to others, and her feeling of being trapped and alone distracts her during the school day. So going on this assumption that all victims feel this way, if they find it hard to communicate with us, how do we help them? And isn't that the question of the day? Well, ever since bully sides have become less rare, We've all seen ads on TV trying to spread the word about bullying and telling us to stand up to it. Even websites dedicated to educating us. It's all great, right? Well, you could say knowledge power is not the appropriate quote here. See, despite all these things, the negative effects of bullying are still increasing. And the question is why? 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 Well, I want to take you to an article I read about our approach to anti-bullying. And the article said, what if bullying is not a cause of poor mental health, but is a sign that it already exists? And I was literally staring at this article for 30 minutes, trying to decipher it and understand it, until it finally hit me. Poor mental health isn't the cause of bullying, it's actually the other way around. And the question is, how do we stop poor mental health before the bullying starts? A simple answer to that is, parents and friends need to make them feel loved, make them feel like they're worth something, and more importantly, Make them feel like they're not alone, because they're not. I guarantee they'll stray away from all the negative influences if they feel that. Because every minute we're disconnected from them is a minute that we're losing them. And every minute they're lost is another minute a potential bully or victim feels alone and trapped. But there's only so much our parents can do. They can't follow us to school and watch us every minute of every day. In the same article, a doctor stated that bullying will only stop through the kids themselves, stating kids see the rules their parents make and externalize them. They say, well, my parents said it's bad, so it must be. But when kids are forced to work together and negotiate to make these rules themselves, they internalize it. They understand. Well, now that it is officially up to us, what do we do about the kids you see at school getting bullied? Or about the kids you witness being a bully? Well, it's that time, and I'm sorry it took so long, but we need to stand up. It's so simple, and I know you heard it a thousand times, but 94% of all bullied kids just want one thing. They just want someone to say something. They want to know that someone actually cares about them. And yes, I totally just made that number up, but I'm almost 100% sure it's true. You see articles about kids like Amanda Todd, and it baffled me how her mother can say she was very involved and loved by everyone, and these terrible things still happen to her. But now I know why. Amanda Todd's mother did everything she could, but it's up to us to be the difference. It's up to us to make a change. And I know how hard it is for one person to start that change, but I'm giving it a shot anyways. My name is Taryn Kim. I have bullied and have been bullied. And I'm ready to learn from my mistakes and make a difference. I hope that you all are too.